flights above you, please do not try to reach out and touch them. This is for your safety and for the bird's safety as well. Also, refrain from walking around or standing up during the show. You might distract the other audience. If you happen to be consuming any food, please keep them away because our birds are pretty curious. They might just decide to come down and share your snacks with you, right? And lastly, everyone, this is very important. You know when the birds fly really low above you, you get all excited, you look up and you go, wow! Please remember to close your mouth. <laughs> they might drop something on the way, right? Okay, now as you can see, the weather is uh, getting a bit dark right now. It might rain suddenly. If it does, we will have to stop the show. If it gets really happy, uh, heavy, not happy. If it gets really heavy, we might even have to cancel the show, right? So keep your fingers crossed. And I am going to move on fast so all of you can get to see all the eggs and also leave the place dry. You okay with that? We start the show? Very good. And with that, everyone, let us begin. Ladies and gentlemen, look right back there. White-tailed sea eagles can be found throughout the coastal areas of Europe. In fact, they are considered to be one of the top five largest eagles in the world. The main source of diet for these birds consists of fish, but they're also known to go for smaller birds and mammals as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you take a good look at him, don't you think he's a pretty big eagle? Yeah, well, if you think he's big, the females are much larger. For the males, right, wingtip to wingtip, it's about 1.8 meters. For the females, it can hit up to 2.4 meters. So you can imagine how big, strong, and powerful the girls are. His name is Junior. Let's watch him make a fly all the way back home. Haha. <laughs> okay, he decided to go to that stuff. Uh, Junior, why don't you fly over here, boy? Right over here. Come on. He's gonna fly over here. Right over here, good boy, that's right. Nice landing. Home is that away. All the way inside, excellent. A round of applause for Junior, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Now, one of the most commonly used birds of prey in falconry would be a hawk. And that too, ladies and gentlemen, a Harris's hawk. Well, joining us this morning, we've got Hawkeye. Hello, Hawkeye, right over here. Thank you very much, Mr. Ong. Now, Harris's hawks like Hawkeye can be found in Central and South America. These birds are commonly used in falconry because they are known for their ability to maneuver very well. They're also very sociable and easy to train, making them excellent choice for hunting. In the wild, Harris's hawks hunt in packs of about eight to nine birds. Usually, the younger birds will flush or flank out the prey, while the older and experienced ones will go for the kill. So lots of teamwork involved. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I mentioned the word hunting. You wanna watch Hawkeye do some hunting right now? Yes, okay. Now, Hawkeye, off you go right up there, up on the tree. Now, everyone, keep your eyes on the bird. This is gonna happen pretty fast. It's bobbing its head right now. Might have spotted something. Off it goes. Whoa, look at that. Thank you. <laughs> now once the hawk has caught something, it'll be very reluctant to let it go. It gets very possessive over its catch. So the falconer would have to do an exchange to separate the bird from the catch just like that. And once he's done so, he will then call the bird to his gloved fist. Nice little hawk there. Well done. So Mr. Ong, can we see what uh, Hawkeye has caught for us? Looks like a... Ah, nice big juicy rabbit. Well done. You're having that for supper, yeah? Okay, well done. Let's give them a round of applause, everyone. Thank you. 
White-bellied sea eagles are very commonly found in Southeast Asia. In fact, they are the largest species of eagles that you can find right here in Singapore. Now, in the wild, these birds are known to snatch venomous banded sea snakes from the surface of the water. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to do a little demonstration. I have with me a replica of a banded sea snake, all right? And I'm going to toss this into the center of the pond. Very shortly, we're going to watch one of our eagles make an attempt to swoop down and snatch it away, right, from the surface of the water. Well, for those of you who have those big DSLR cameras, you might want to focus right in the center. That would be a good spot, all right? So everyone, you ready for this? Yeah, okay, if you're all set, let's welcome Chaturya. Here we come. to a very slippery snake. Unlike other eagles, uh, white-bellied sea eagles have rough undersides which enable them to get a good grip, all right? As you can see, he's still very possessive over what he caught. He will not let it go. So what I have to do? I have to do an exchange. Just like that. All right, of course, we can always use this for tomorrow. <laughs> By the way, ladies and gentlemen, Chaturya back there is still a juvenile. He is only two years old. Once he hits the age of about five, that's when the feather on his head all the way down to his belly will turn white in color. That's how they get the name, the white-bellied sea eagle. Now, thank you very much, Chaturya. You can head back home right now. Thank you. Good boy. Beautiful white-bellied sea eagle. So, so far you have seen an eagle from Europe and Asia. Well, our next eagle, ladies and gentlemen, is from North America. Why are they called the bald eagles when they actually do have feathers on their head? Well, basically, the word bald is an older English word for white head. So that's how they got the name. Now, these birds build really huge nests. If you're wondering how big the bald eagle's nest could get, take a look at the pond behind me. That would give you a rough idea, right? And the world record for the heaviest bald eagle nest weighs an impressive two tons. Pretty awesome, right, ladies and gentlemen? They're also known as the emblem of the United States of America. Thank you very much, Susie. Off you go. Good job. Round of applause for them, everyone. Thank you. Very beautiful eagle. Now, besides the flights of eagles, hawks, and falcons, the modern falconer would also fly his nocturnal counterpart. When I mention the word nocturnal, what type of a bird of prey comes to your mind? Oh, say it louder. Owls, there you go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the modern falconer would fly owls mainly to demonstrate an owl's ability of silent flight. Now, we've got one right up there. He's going to make a short flight down. In the meantime, I would like everyone to remain as silent as possible. And also, please remain seated so you can experience the owl's silent flight. All right, here he comes. There you go, well done indeed. Now, unlike other birds of prey, owls have this very soft edge at the tip of their feathers. So the sound frequency created by the wing flaps will be absorbed by those feathers. Well, that's not the only reason, there's another reason too. Ladies and gentlemen, what do owls mainly hunt for at night? Anyone knows? Mice and rats, right? Rodents! Rodents come out at night, and rodents have a cute sense of hearing. So the owl would have to be very quiet in order to catch its prey without being detected at all. That's why they're also known as the silent hunters of the night. Now this is Belang, Malay fish owl can be found throughout Southeast Asia. This particular species has evolved to hunt for fish, so that makes them very unique. 
I'm pretty sure all of you know that owls are able to turn their head all the way to the back, right? Yeah? Okay, so here's a question for all of you. How many degrees do you think an owl is able to turn its head? How about the folks on this side? Young man, how many degrees? 200 and? 270 degrees. Anyone else? Okay, I heard 360. I heard 360, 270. Folks on this side? 180. 280, 360, 270. Ah, we've got many answers, I tell you what. The correct answer would be 270 degrees. There you go, well done, well done. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, 360, not possible. <laughs> That is a full circle. The owl might sprain its neck. You don't want that happening, okay? Okay, thank you very much, Valan. Good boy. Right now, we have come to the very interactive part of the show. And it's time for an audience participation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am looking for an adult volunteer. I would need the help of a, uh, how about a brave, strong lady? Any ladies out there would like to try this? Ladies, raise your hands. Don't be shy. <laughs> okay, uh, ma'am, the ma'am in the orange dress, why don't you make your way down? That's right. Let's give a big round of applause, everyone. right over there. Very good. Hello, why don't you tell everyone what's your name, where you're from? I'm Ramya from India. Ramya from India. Welcome to Singapore. Ramya, I've got a Thank question you so for much. you. Have you ever handled any birds of prey before, like a hawk or an eagle? Uh, not eagle, uh -huh. but of course cockatiel. Uh, Cockatiels, cockatiel. cockatiel. but not birds of prey, right? Only parrots. Uh, yeah, eagle I have uh, actually, uh, you know, that's very Powerful, oh, strong. Yeah, oh. You haven't handled it before. No, no. Well, today is a very lucky day. Very Indeed. shortly, we're going to get one to fly and land on the arm very shortly, okay? Yeah. Now, before all that takes place, what I'll need you to do is put this glove on, on your left arm. Make sure it fits very well. Now, once you're comfortable, just take a few steps forward. All right, now face the audience and stretch your arm out to the side like that. Very good. Now, ma'am, this is the most important part. You will need to listen up very carefully, okay? When the bird lands on your arm, you've got to keep very still. Because it's a pretty huge bird of prey. It's about this size. Wow. So when it lands, it lands with a big impact like that. Is it very heavy? I don't know. You will find out soon. <laughs> okay? So, what's the most important thing? Do not move your arm. Do not move your arm. Because if you move your arm, instead of landing here, she's going to land on your head. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, are you nervous? No, not at all. You're not, right? I love to be. You love to be nervous? No, no, no. Love to be on your hand. Oh, okay. You would like the bird to be on your hand. Okay, don't worry. Uh, all you... Oh, no. Left hand only. Okay? Don't worry, ma'am. All you have to do is just relax and keep still. Okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, all of you all set, let's welcome Hazel! Can you see her? Here she comes! Yeah, there you go! <laughs> and she's going to make a short flight to Ernie, who's right up there. You want to open up your palm, man? Ah, let her have all that food. Now she's going to fly really low above your heads, ladies and gentlemen. Here she comes. There you go. <laughs> How was that? Lovely. Pretty awesome, right? Let me take a look at Hazel right up there. Do you know what type of a bird of prey she is? Kings of prey? No, what, what type? Do you think she's an eagle? Do you think she's a hawk or a vulture? Uh, vulture. Vulture, very good. To be exact, Hazel is a hooded vulture. Hooded vultures can be found in Africa. In fact, they are one of the smallest vultures that you can find right back there. 360, the head? No, only owls. Only ours 270, no birds 360. Okay, <laughs> now we're gonna get her to fly land on the arm one more time. Call for her name, Hazel! Here she comes! <laughs> oh, very nice! Okay, ma'am, pose for a nice picture. Yeah, by the way, who's taking photos of you? Where is he? Hello, sir, you got some nice photos. You got a, you got a picture of me too? <laughs> yeah, very good, okay. Ma'am, hold on to this mic. Is Hazel heavy? How many kilos do you think she weighs? Six two? 
Six to seven kilos. No, much lesser. Sorry? Three kilos? Three kilos, she's only two. Oh. That's right, feels heavy, right? Yeah. Can you handle her for the next 10 minutes? Sorry? Can you handle her for the next 10 minutes? Uh, <laughs> I think he doesn't know. Not too, my hand, of too heavy, right? Yeah. Okay, not to worry. Okay, we'll watch her make a flight back home, alright? Now, thank you very much, Hazel. Hope is that a very good girl. Very good. Let's give Hazel a big round of applause, everyone. Thank you very much. No more breaks, no worries. So, Beth, there you go. How was that experience handling a vulture? Sorry? How was that experience handling a vulture? Awesome. Pretty awesome. Awesome. Dream come true. There you go. So, when you head back home to India, you can tell all your friends who took a picture with a hooded vulture. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a big round of applause. Our brave and sporting volunteer, Ramya from India. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Have a great day in the park, all right? Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, so far, so far you have seen one of the smallest vultures that you can find in Africa. Well, our next bird of prey is the largest bird of prey in the world. Ah, would you like to see him? Okay, I'll need all of you to call for his name. His name is George! Here he comes, everyone! George the Indian Condor! Right over here, George! Good boy! Now, ladies and gentlemen, Andean condors can be found in the Andes Mountains of Peru. They are indeed the largest birds of prey in the world. They can weigh up to 15 kilograms and have a massive wingspan of about 3.2 meters. All right, let's watch this wingspan. Right up here, George. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> now, being a scavenger, they hardly hunt for their food. Whenever they chance upon a uh, huge carcass like that, they will consume their food very fast, all right? In fact, they have a unique suction system to enable them to eat up their food extremely fast. Okay, George, you've done pretty well. Time for you to head back home. Thank you very much. Everyone say bye-bye, George. Bye -bye. There you go. I like the way he runs. <laughs> All the way inside. Bye-bye, George. All the way. There you go. I saw you. Okay. You going again? Okay, good boy. He's gone wrong. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. You saw Hazel. You saw George. Now, unfortunately, many of these vulture species are rapidly declining in the wild. Now, these birds are extremely important to our environment because they help to reduce the spread of contagious diseases by consuming carrion. In fact, they are nature's cleanup crew. So please do read up about vultures and also help out in vulture conservation programs. Now, we shall continue. When one vulture descends upon a carcass, the war will follow. Now it's a very common sight to see these birds, okay, coexist with one another in the wild, but they all feed on a huge carcass like that. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got more birds joining us! to 
day. I'm sure all of you would agree that they certainly deserve and merit the title, the Kings of the Sky. Now, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. All of you are more than welcome to come forward, take pictures of the birds flying around. If you have any questions regarding the birds you saw on the